Hi everyone, my name is Abun Elijah Berry from Berry Science Lab, and today we're going to be talking about the Euler characteristic. And when Euler characteristic comes to mind, you're probably thinking of, you know, a polyhedron, but they extend to so much more than just concave and convex two-dimensional polyhedrons. So what can they do? Well, we can actually generalize them to any surface. And today, we'll be finding it for a surface that looks something like this. Okay, it looks like a torus, but here's the twist. That's not the surface we're analyzing. The surface we're analyzing actually looks something like this. So we've got kind of one of those two-sided visit spinners that you might have seen a while ago. Something like that is what we're analyzing. To be formal, we're analyzing a double torus or surface of genus 2 with a disk right here removed. So, we're trying to find the Euler characteristic of this, but where would you even begin? What's the vertices, edges, faces of this construction? Well, here's how you can go about it. First of all, think of just the regular surface of genus 2. You don't even have to think about removing that open disk, and I'll show you why later. Now, you can actually form this from an octagon. I'll show you how. So first, let's talk about forming a regular torus from a square. You've already probably seen how, and in fact, it's easier to look at it with a rectangle. You have something like this. And first, you join it. You join it into a cylinder. Okay, and then you take these two and glue them together. So now, you might be asking, well, hold up, wait a second. I thought the Euler characteristic was preserved over all topological deformations. And the Euler characteristic of any 2D polygon is always 1 because there's one face, and the number of vertices and edges of a polygon is always going to be the same. So it's always 1 which means the Euler characteristic of any surface like this and this should always be 1, right? Well, not that simple, because what we're doing here when gluing these is co-identifying them. All that means is we're essentially merging the two into 1. So here, we went from having 4 different edges to 3 different edges. These two guys over here, and this one guy over here. And then we went from that to having only 
two edges because we co-identify these two guys as well. What about vertices? Well, we started with four vertices. When we bent it over like this, we had two vertices, and then we bent it over again in a circle, and now we only have one vertex because these two meet up. So that means by gluing things together, you've successfully transformed the Euler characteristic from 4 minus 4 plus 1 equals 1 down to, well, there's still one face, but you have four, no, you have one vertex and you have two edges, which means that the is zero. Okay, interesting. But now, how do you extend that to this? Well, very similarly, first, you take an octagon, you kind of bend it a little, so you get something like So as you can see, these two sides have become a little creased. This goes to this, this goes to this, so on and so forth. And now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to meet up these, but these don't have enough space to meet up, which A, curls this up, and co-identifies most of these. So as you can see, these two edges were brought together to make this dotted line, and these two edges were brought together to make this dotted line. So we've automatically turned four edges into two. And now, these two can't really co-identify with one another, because if you bend these two together, these two still have a sizable distance in between them. So, it kind of looks something like this. Got a massive hole in the middle. So that means, right now, we went from having eight vertices, eight edges, eight faces, to having now what? Um, not four vertices. We still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertices. Wait, did I say eight faces? Still have eight vertices. We still have eight edges. We still have one face. But suddenly, this has first co-identified these four vertices. These four, two just became one. These two just became one. In fact, not just that, these two also just became one. And these two also just became one. So instantly, we've transformed eight vertices into these four. What about the edges? Well, you still have now one, two, three, four, five, six. Which means that we've transformed the Euler characteristic from the normal one to by gluing together some of these sides, we've transformed it into minus one. Okay, great. But now what do we do? Well, I'm going to take these two and try to bend, bend this to meet them together. Like a weird origami. But that is going to create two holes. Something like now we have 
something really messed up. So we've tried to bend it to meet these two points, co-identify them as one. And now it looks like we only have three vertices. And we have, this is one edge, this is another edge, this is, this is a third edge, this is a fourth edge. So we have four edges. Let me think. Oh no, these two are also edges. So this becomes six. And then, what else do we have here? I mean, not much new stuff. So now, we kind of plug it. We take this, bend it, and plug it, in, plug it in here. We take this, bend it, and plug it into this hole. And suddenly, that gives us the two connected toruses that we all know and love. And now, how many are left? Well, you have, let's see here. One wrapping around edge this way, one edge. Then you have one edge this way. Well, let's think about it. Yeah. This is connected to this, this is connected to that. See, you've co-identified this edge with this edge, and this edge with that edge, which means you've subtracted two edges from this whole thing. So, originally there were six edges. Now, but let's think. Let's think. I think these two have also been co-identified with one another. So, that should bring the total count to three. So let me think about it for a second. There is one face. There are three edges. And how many vertices are there? Well, one. Everything's been co-identified over here. Hmm. No, there are four edges. Yeah. So there's one edge this way, another edge this way, a third edge this way, and the fourth edge this way. We co identify these two and these two, which means we subtracted two edges from the total here. And we also co identify this vertex, this vertex, and this vertex, which collapses the three into just one. And as always, there's only one face. So whereas here, the Euler characteristic was 3 minus 6 plus 1 is minus 2, the Euler characteristic here is, well, still, three mi uh, 1 minus 4 plus 1 is minus 2. And in fact, for any surface of genus G, it's going to be 2 minus 2G. The original torus has genus 1, so it's 0. This one has minus 2. The triple torus has minus 4, etc. Also, this is how we say an octagon is homologous. Eh, whatever. Not going to mention homology today. Oh, I'm forgetting the words. So, that means that this can be deformed into a double torus with the right amount of twisting and contortion. And now we've also measured the normal double torus is number of edges at, wait, wait a second, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, yeah. So, the normal double torus has an Euler characteristic of negative 2, but what we've done by removing a disk, is remove one edge. If you remove a disk, you've automatically increased the Euler characteristic by one, which means the Euler characteristic of this guy is negative one. That's it. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.